Hello and welcome to the Jonas.net. My name is Donald Jonas and today I'm going to do a two-part video tutorial on how to do backups in Zimbra Open Source Edition. The first video is going to be how to uh, back up the entire Zimbra installation using a script. In the second tutorial video we're going to restore the entire Zimbra installation uh, via backup. The Linux distribution I'm using today is CentOS version 5.6 and that is the 64-bit edition. CentOS is based upon Red Hat Enterprise Edition and you can download CentOS for free from www.centos.org. In this particular backup uh, tutorial video, I'm going to be backing up my Zimbra installation to an additional internal hard drive. And that hard drive resides unattached to my operating system and I will connect it using a script to this directory called storage1. So you can go into your root and create a directory. Um, if you're not familiar with what I'm talking about, I did a recent tutorial video on how to add an additional internal hard drive to your Linux uh, operating system. I would recommend watching that tutorial video. That way you have a better understanding of how I'm doing my backups today. So I'm going to now mount. Mount is a term to use in Linux to attach. They also use it in Unix. The hard drive to this directory using this script. And there it is. I also explained how to make the script in that tutorial video. Now, I created a directory called Zimber Backups on this hard drive, which we're now attached to. And I recently did a backup on June 14th, 2011. The beauty of this script is that when it runs, it copies your default Zimber installation to wherever you'd like, wherever the directory path in the script is, and it changes the name from Zimber and gives it the day's date that you ran the actual backup. So it takes a, some administrative responsibility out of your hands because if you run them every night, it's always going to change the name so they can reside nice and comfortably in the same directory. I recently did a tutorial video on doing very simple backups that do require some administrative responsibility where you would actually have to go in and change the name of the backup so the following night's backup did not overwrite your previous backup. This kind of builds on that concept. We use a, using a cron job in the script you can pretty much point the um, the required the requested uh, cron job or the backup to whatever folder you want. So it doesn't necessarily have to be Zimbra. It can be a folder that contains all your users' files and information that is mapped out as say as a network drive. You can back that up to a new location and give it the day's date. That way, if somebody needs a particular file from a particular day, it's so simple. You just look for the day drill down in the directory so you find the file and get it for them. So it doesn't get much more easier than that. Now this script that I'm referring to resides, I put it into a folder on the root, I call it scripts, and we'll just take a look at it here. Open it with a text editor. It's a very simple script, typical bin bash, stop the Zimbra service, copy the default location of Zimbra using a minus RP command space to the location where you want to put it. In this case it's going to be storage 1 which will be attached to another hard drive into a directory on that hard drive called Zimbra Backups and then it changes the name to the date and then it starts the service backup. The reason I stop and start the Zimbra service during the backup process is because I don't want to break the installation. Um, on the professional version there are ways to do your backups and to do more granular backups of just say particular email boxes while the um, email services are still running is my understanding. I haven't had much success finding a script that actually synchronizes everything that when you do your backups you don't have to stop it. So I like to play on the side of caution, just stop the service, make my backups and then start them back up. I've actually had to use this in one instance where my hard drive did fail and luckily I was able to restore uh, from the previous night's backup so the wasn't too much lost and it's worked pretty well. The key is not to lose any information but unfortunately with the open source edition the backup tools are not as uh, robust as they are in the professional edition so hopefully that'll change with newer releases of Zimbra but right now, with this backup, it backs up the entire Zimbra installation, and you can restore the entire Zimbra installation. 
It helps you sleep a little better at nighttime. At least you're as good as your last backup. I do about a six gig backup and using this method takes about three or four minutes. So it's not too bad. So this script I actually have on my website. Just go to www.thejonas.net, type in Zimbra in the search engine. And it's right here. I'll just copy this. We'll make a quick script. Let's go new and paste it in. The only thing you're going to change is the location of your backup folder. So in my case, it would be storage one. Zimber backups and then save it. I'll save it to the desktop. And that's pretty much it. And then rename it. Give it an easy, you know, a recognizable name. I'll just call this test. And I'm gonna have to make a couple quick changes. If you try to execute the script, it just opens in a text editor. So we need to right click on it and go to properties. Go to permissions. The default is usually fine. Uh, read, write, read only, read only. But you have to check allow executing file as program. If you don't, it'll just open in a text editor. See now it'll try to open in a terminal and it'll actually run the information on the script. It'll actually run the script. So we'll cancel out of that. And then just place it to where um, you can run your backups. I just, like I said, I create one folder called scripts on my particular server. I just drop everything in there. That way I know everything is and it's properly labeled. All we need to do now is let's check the webmail to make sure that that is working correctly before we do this. Bring up my webmail. This is a very uh, generic installation. If you followed my tutorial video on how to set up Zimbra, it's basically all I did. Zimbra really installs itself once you get rolling. It's, it's, it's a great solution. It's free. Send a quick email off. Test, one, two, three. Message sent. And it's working normally. Do it with a calendar entry here. Okay, this Zimbra installation is working perfectly fine. So now we just need to run the backup. So uh, launch a web browser, go into Webmin, localhost, or 10,000. If you don't know what Webmin is, a lot of good information out there on the internet on it. Otherwise, I actually go in a little more detail on how to install it and set it up in my DNS and DHCP video under the Jonas.net. It's a great free administrative tool. Log in. And we're going to go to system. We're going to go to scheduled cron jobs. And we're going to schedule a job. Create a new scheduled cron job. We're going to run this as root. Actually, you can run it however you want, however your permissions are set up. A command is just going to be the execution of the script, so it would just be slash, directory is called scripts, and the name of the script for me is called Zimbra. That's it. Very simple. All right. I like to populate all the fields with that information to make it easily identifiable. Now, you can run it hourly, which would defeat your purpose because it changes the day's date so it would always overwrite each other so you kind of want to go to midnight that way every day will change um, that's the best way that's going to eat up the most hard drive space because you're going to do a backup every night and as your environment grows it, and you do backups I mean it's better that you always have your backups but if you want to not eat as much hard drive space up you can maybe do a little bit less aggressive backup solution and do times and dates selected below. You can choose for instance every 30 minutes. It's a kind of a 24 hour military time thing so uh, here's 3 a.m. Days, just do a control click. Let's just pick a couple days here. A couple four days. So with this solution this script would run the backups 
at 3.30 in the morning every month on the 3rd, the 8th, the 18th, and the 21st. So you basically get four backups a month. Different ways of doing it. I like to do it to where it does it every night at midnight. And let's just create it. And we'll go into it right here and make sure it is active. And we can run this job now. As you can see, it's stopping the services and it will soon copy it over with the day's date. Zimber is an excellent solution. It works great with the Android devices, the iPhones, iPads. I have them both. I can get my calendars, my email, uh, global address book. No problem. There's tons of apps out there that work with it. Well, not a ton, but there are several. And with the client Thunderbird, it works great. I have no problem connecting my calendars. Uh, I use a plugin called Zendis that allows me to connect to the uh, global address book. So it's really a free enterprise solution. Great collaboration server. So this is going to take a few minutes. I'm going to pause the video. I'll be right back and we'll make sure that our backup was uh, made and moved into proper directory. I will be back in a few minutes. All right, great. The script is done running. It stopped the services, made the copy, and started the services back up. Let's log out, close out of this, and go into the backup directory, which is right here. There it is, just to show you. Storage 1, backups. And today's date is the 19th, so June 19th, 2011. It Backup ran just normally. Let's go into the webmail real quick just to make sure that's still working normally. And once we log in, we'll just send off a quick email. Now let's go new. Test. And test. Message sent. So it came right through. Calendar. Another calendar entry. Just for fun and make sure everything is working. Obviously these entries and email I just sent will not be restored because they're done after the backup was made. So this worked out very well. Thank you for watching my tutorial video on how to do backups in uh, Zimmer Open Source Edition from the Jonas.net. And I will start the second tutorial video here in a moment, and have a nice day.